Radical Islam has warned us it is out to destroy America and the West. But what about the moderate Muslims? We're assured again and again that Islam is a religion of peace, that the overwhelming majority of Muslims are appalled by the violence committed in the name of Islam, that they want to peacefully coexist with members of other faiths. This is all undoubtedly true, but are there enough moderate Muslims standing up and condemning the sort of things you've seen tonight? Next, I give that opportunity to a leading American Muslim cleric. Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf is the founder of the American Society for Muslim Advancement, which says that it's trying to build bridges between the American public and American Muslims. I show Imam Faisal some of the video you've seen this hour. I pray to Allah that he will make the enemies fall into their own trap, and he will destroy the Jews and their helpers, and that he will turn them into the Muslim spoils. Why do we see that on Arab TV? What is, what is the it that we're seeing on Arab TV? Then? We're seeing basically hate Jews, hate Christians, hate anyone who is not exactly like us. In my judgment, uh, Edie, this is a result of political developments in the last 60, 70 years in the region. Um, let's take a look at this. And I think for me, because I'm a mom, I have eight kids. Eight? This is the most disturbing. Brothers, get ready. They are coming. I place my trust in God. They use children's programming to glorify violence and, and hatred. All religions call for love. No religion calls for hate, Edie. Then what explains that? What explains this? is politics. You don't see any American cartoons saying no, kill but, the Muslims. But these are not not a result of of the Islamic impulse. It is an, it is it is a result of a political impulse. Okay, look at the next one. Let's see. Bahida they say that when you leave a sermon and meet a Jew or Christian, you must not display hostility towards them. We are forbidden to attack them, but we have a duty to hate them, as is written in the Quran and the Sunnah. Are those people taking the Quran and taking it out of context? Yes, there's a difference between what we say in, in, in this country on that, you know, you should differentiate between the sin, hate the sin, but not the sinner. Um, the Quran teaches the same principle. Then how do we get these terrorist organizations that come out and make these statements and use the Koran to justify themselves and their actions? There is something in the human psychology which, which believes in the superiority of its own individual faith and wants to impose it on everybody else. Mm -hmm. There are those who are Christians who are like this. There are those who are Muslims who are like this. The difference that we see here in America is that when you have some kooky organization that claims to be a Christian organization, there is an outcry from the mainstream Christian population against these people. When you see this with, uh, with radical Muslim organizations, we don't see that outcry. One reason is that those who critique and criticize that as being uh, incompatible with the teachings of our faith are not getting the, uh, the, the air time that they deserve in terms of the media because that is generally not, uh, doesn't attract the media as much as people who stand up and say all non-Muslims should be killed. We can't, that's, but that's, side, that's but not really, accurate. We personally, and on my show, tried to find someone to condemn the attacks in Great Britain. We found one person. Well, like it I is mentioned. very difficult. The sense that I get is that moderate Muslims in America and elsewhere in the world are afraid to speak out because they fear that the radical Muslims will kill them as quickly as they'll kill anyone else. Muslim spokesmen are caught between, um, between a number of objectives. Part of it is to express the principles of their faith, which they are bound to. But part of what they feel also is to express the sentiments of their community on the issues which the community feels passionate about. In the United States, I think we need to force the Islamic, quote, mainstream leadership to unequivocally condemn Islamic terrorist organizations by name. 
Muslim organizations around the world that claim to be charitable organizations. They're teaching and supporting the families who are essentially sacrificing their kids. The jihadist ideology grow wherever uh, there are preachers for this jihadist ideology. It could be in Yemen, but it could be also in Birmingham, it could be in New York. <laughs> Unless we're going to take serious action, the attacks are going to get worse and worse. And right now we are worried about nuclear bombs in the hand of terrorists who will use them in a blink uh, if they can. Do, does anybody have any doubt if Osama bin Laden had a nuclear bomb that September 11, 2001, that he wouldn't have used it instead of the airplane? When people use airplane as human missiles and fly them into skyscrapers, they have no conscience, they have no soul. It's been more than five years since 9-11, and during that time, America has avoided another major terrorist attack. The rest of the world has not been that lucky. What we've shown you tonight is that the will to harm us is still there and even growing. And where there's a will, there's often a way. We at Fox News think that keeping these terrorist words and images in mind is important if we don't want to have 9-11 happen again. For more about this story, log on to foxnews.com. And while you're online, send me an email. I'd like to know what you think. The address is fncspecials at foxnews.com. I'm Edie Hill. Thanks for watching.